the philosophy of exploitation. The inner workings of government are unknown to the outer world. Every ministerial cabinet is oath-bound and all the higher officials are pledged and obliged under a death penalty to the most strict secrecy. Indeed, under the cover of popular government, the financial empire of the world is an established fact. No man has or ever had any inherent right to the use of the earth, or to personal independence, or to freedom of thought, or to anything except he can, by himself or in conjunction with his allies, assert his rights by power, assert, maintain and defend such rights against violent aggressions from others. What are in legalistic parlance called rights are really spoil, legalized robbery, the prerogatives of previously exerted might, but their right lapses immediately when those who are enjoying it become incapable of further maintaining it. Consequently, all rights are as transient as morning rainbows, international treaties or clauses in a temporary armistice. They may be abrogated at any moment by one of the contracting parties, holding the necessary power in a position to do violence to the others and able to make it stick. Broadly speaking, therefore, might, brute violence, is incarnated right, and rights are metamorphosed mites. Power and justice are synonyms, for might is mighty and thus prevail. They who possess the indisputable might, be they one, ten or ten million, may and do proclaim the right to plunder and terrorize their victims. Government is founded on property, legalized robbery. Property is founded on conquest, brute violence. And conquest is founded on power, brute violence. And power is founded on brain and brawn an organic animality. Just as parents dictate rights to their children, so masterful animals dictate rights impose their will and greed upon to millions and millions of sodden-livered, baby-minded men. Monarchic rulers are the gaudy jumping jacks and representative institutions the tax-gathering mechanism of the mighty ones, the unscrupulous plotting scoundrels. Banks and safe deposits are their treasure stores and armies and navies, their sentinels, executioners and watchmen. All arbitrary rules of right and wrong are insolent invasions of personal liberty. He who would maintain his manhood must ignore them and abandon them wherever and whenever possible, except he has investigated them, paralleled them with nature and without coercion agrees to abide thereby as a modus vivendi. Ragnar Redbeard in Mightis Right.